salvation, this is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. The call for salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been two thousand years. Hello friends. Welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Pastor Maria. Jesus said to proclaim the good news to every nation of the world. That is the goal of Voices in the Wilderness TV ministry. Our scripture of the day is Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Joining us again for part two of this interview is Manny Lardizabal. Manny is an apostle, a prophet, an anointed speaker, and teacher of God's work. Word. Welcome back. You're a teacher of God's word and his work as well. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we had a really wonderful time in, in part one. And so we want to continue this conversation because, I mean, the messages that you carry are very powerful. I mean, um, you, you carry unity, uh, you carry uh, identity, you know, the, our identity in Christ, which is so very important for such a time as this. Because, you know, we see so many things happening in our our around the world, if we don't know who we are, we're, we're going to lose the battle. So I think yeah. that, you know, since the battle has already won and we just need to know that, right? right. Talk a little bit about our, our identity in Christ and then we'll, we'll uh, talk about something else. But I do have to say that uh, for, um, l let me just say this to the folks yes. out there, for those people that didn't see part one, you really need to see uh, part one of that interview because that was really amazing. And that will give you some keys to really set you, set you free. So uh, let's continue. Sure. Well, thank you again, Maria, for having me back. Um, you know, the powerful thing about the kingdom and our purpose, our, our identity is to fulfill our purpose here on earth. Yes. The Bible says that we're supposed to bring thy kingdom come that will be done here on earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. One thing that the Lord showed me that you can bring something from a place that you've never been. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And so we're supposed to bring the kingdom and we've never been in the kingdom or understand the kingdom, we can't bring that here on earth. Right, right. And so that revelation that the Lord had given me on that is that, is that if I understand the kingdom, the kingdom principles, mm -hmm. the, the, the outline of the kingdom and how it functions, that's what we're supposed to bring. Right. And so, so with that being said, I, 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 we have found that many people don't understand the kingdom. And so they're not really, they think they're fulfilling their purpose and moving in their identity, but they're only moving in a place of their identity out of limitation, not in the fullness of who they're supposed to be. And, you know, that's so important because I remember when I first became a believer, I don't know, many years ago, many, many years ago, I don't even care, uh, 20, 30 years ago, who knows, a long time ago. But anyway, I remember uh, when I, I used to really wonder, what was the message of Jesus? Because it just can't be what I was hearing because I wasn't seeing uh, lives being restored or a victory. So I would just really wonder. Right. And then that's when, you know, that scripture just came to life when Jesus said, he talked about two things. The kingdom of God is at hand, yeah. right? To repent, first of all, repentance. Yes. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So those were the, the messages of, of Jesus repentance and the kingdom. Yeah. So what does a kingdom lifestyle look, look like to you? Oh, wow. Well, the kingdom lifestyle, this is to me. Um, the kingdom is, to me, is not, is taking territory, not territory being taken away from me. Okay. That's one thing of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The kingdom, for because it says, for the kingdom is ours, so the, for right. the kingdom and his glory and his power. Mm -hmm. And the, the kingdom to me, it's, it's a place that I, I, I work from, not a place I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. See, many Christians are waiting to die to go to heaven, right. but we're supposed to be bringing heaven here on earth. Okay. And so, so m many people are like, well, I'm just passing through. I, I don't know if you ever heard that. Oh, yeah. we're, we're, just, we're, we're, we're in the world, but we're not of it. And uh -huh. so we're just passing by. And right. well, a pass buyer has no authority, right. doesn't take ownership. A pass buyer is like me coming, I rent a vehicle, I rent a hotel, I don't have ownership. Right. And so if we don't have the mentality and the understanding of our purpose, right. and, and we're just coming through 
and, and don't have the revelation that we're supposed to take ownership. That's right. what the kingdom is. Right. Take dominion. Be fruitful. Multiply. Mm -hmm. Function from the promises of, of my word, what the kingdom is. Then, then you can bring mm -hmm. the kingdom. Because you've been there, you understand it. Right, you function. Right. He says we're seated in heavenly places. Right. Well, that's in the kingdom. Right, right. And and uh, he clearly says the kingdom of God is within you. Right. So yes. we have the kingdom of God inside of us. And you know, you, you know, you were talking about territory, land, and uh, that is a big part of covenant. Mm -hmm. The land, right? Yes. The, the land where God has placed you in your authority in the place where God has has yes. place you in. And so I think that that's so important. And by that, you know, I know we, we mean in a spiritual way as well, you know, uh, whatever the enemy has stolen from you because of ignorance, right? Yes. We can gain that back, being relationships, being financial, being health. Everything can be restored once we're walking in that kingdom lifestyle, yes. right? Yes, yes. That, that's that's amazing. So, um, you know, you like I said, you carry these great messages and you have uh, your, your ministry um, has different aspects, different parts to it, you know, the prayer and the prayer network. But you also work with uh, Native American people. Yes, right? we do. So talk about that. So the Lord really opened up the doors for us about 10 years ago. Um, the, we received a prophetic word that we were, me and my wife received this this word together. And it said that we were going to go to the nations. I was ready to go <laughs> everywhere. You know, all right, let's go do this. Yeah. And it wasn't happening. And God says, it is the nation within the nation. Oh. It's at your back door. Wow. It's a sovereign nation that exists that people don't understand that they're sovereign to me. And, and it's important. And I'm like, oh, well, at first I was like, well, I don't have relationships with Native Americans. I really don't know much Native Americans. Right, right. But just in the instance of being obedient, right. it's out of obedience that he's able to do what he needs to do. And a lot of us don't, don't understand that. But it was out of obedience that me and my wife said, you know what, if that's the nation we're supposed to be in, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And so out of that obedience, God just started opening up the doors for us. Wow. We started meeting a lot of ministers, a lot of people from the, the Native culture. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the majority of them were the Navajo, is the Navajo Nation. Mm -hmm. The Navajo Nation is, is a sovereign nation and it's one of the biggest nations wow. you know, in the, in the Native uh, culture. And so God really opened up the doors in the last 10 years. We've developed, we've ministered, we've discipled, we've equipped, we've uh, uh, partnered with, um, with uh, different ministries. We've mm -hmm. actually ordained um, some ministers also that are out there on the reservations I currently see. doing tent revivals and, and stuff like that. So uh, how is it to work with the Native American people? Is, is it, um, are they receptive? Because, I mean, they've got their own spiritual way of doing things right. themselves, right? They have yes. their own religion. Yes. So so how was that? Is that difficult? It took, it, it took I say, about six months to be able to build the trust Okay. Because it was trust issues. Oh, here comes another oh, 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 American, a white man. What does he want? What do they want to take? Mm -hmm. And so it took to build trust and build a relationship from at the very beginning. It wasn't like we were able to go out there and put up a tent and start ministering, right. you know. Right. And so with, with that in the process, it, it opened up the opportunity of understanding that, hey, look, we're about the kingdom of God. We're about equipping you, discipling you mm -hmm. to make your life better. Amen. You know. So, so you teach these kingdom oh, yeah. pr principles wherever you go, yes. in every uh, culture and, and place that yes. that you witness to, that you minister to. Yes. That that's wonderful. And so then, I mean, the nations here, but you also just got back from a trip to Africa, right? Yes. And so, we, I mean, you work there too. So, mm -hmm. how was, what was that like? It was really, really powerful. The very first trip that we took, me and my wife went together. It was open through a good friend of ours that's in the military, and she does um, nursing duties there in Africa, assignments through the military. Mm -hmm. And so a relationship that she developed there, and a very good friend of ours, mm -hmm. she invited us. And so we went on this trip, and what we found was that, that um, there was, they, we found that many of them had been saved over and over and over <laughs> and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew about salvation, but they didn't know anything beyond the cross. Wow. They knew about the cross, but they didn't know how to function beyond the cross. 
And mm-hmm. so when God revealed that to us on the second night that we were there, we started speaking how to live in the kingdom beyond wow. the cross, That's the good. purpose, because That's Jesus so good. did. Oh, yeah. That's so good. And you know what? I don't think it's unique to that culture. I think many, even as a whole, you know, they hear the message of salvation, but there is no discipleship. And, yeah. you know, and Jesus said, go and make disciples. Yes out of yes. every nation in the world. Disciples, yes. meaning a follower of Christ, of, of yes. him. And so I think that that's missing because you uh, there's uh, levels of maturity and it's like, you know, sometimes uh, Christians can be on the baby milk mm-hmm. forever, but he says he wants us to get on the meat, right? Oh, yeah. So how do you go about maturing uh, the, the people that you minister? Well, first, it, it's understanding the culture and the people you're ministering to. Mm-hmm. Understanding that, that many of them have not been taught. When I talk about the kingdom, there's some things that I say that it's just like, whoa, that's really right. high. Right, you right. Know? And so understanding that, hey, wait a minute. They, we're supposed to give them this, but at the level of their understanding of where they're at. Mm-hmm. And so what we have found in many places, even here in the United States, mm-hmm. is that many of them... Um, they don't understand that there's a responsibility of us of functioning in all the identities that we're supposed to be. We're just not children of God. We're just not sheep being tended by a shepherd, which that is good, right? Right. But we're also called to be soldiers for Christ. Right. We are also to be ambassadors for right. Christ. Right. You know, we're supposed to be kings and priests. Right. What is all that? Right. A lot of people don't understand the importance of that. So in Africa, being able to bring that, okay, you've been saved. Yes. Praise God. What's next? We have a responsibility of understanding our purpose and our identity. Bring the kingdom now while we're here on right. earth, not waiting to go to heaven. Right. And teaching them the basic principles of this. Mm-hmm. So what that does, it changes their mindset. They're no longer looking at the environment that has been established around right. them. Right. It, it, you know, people ask me about my faith. And I tell them this, that my faith doesn't deny that the problem exists. Right. It doesn't give the problem the, the, the room to have an influence on my decision. That's right. That's right. Because, you know, like we were saying in the other show, everybody goes through tribulations yes. and through, through whatever. But we are victorious in Christ, aren't yes, we, Yes, we are. Wow, wow. Yeah. And so you, you walk in signs and wonders and miracles. What, what was one of the, let's say, most significant sign and wonder that you've experienced? Mine has been my own personal <coughs> testimony, my own thing that the Lord, I have two powerful, I, I should be dead twice, um, but I'll share one of them. Really? Wow. Yeah. One of them was, um, we were at a playground, well, not a playground, we were at an elementary school with my daughters when they were a lot younger. Um, they used to, it's down in the South Valley where, you know, poverty area. Mm-hmm. We're in the playground. Uh, security came and locked all the, the gates and everything. Didn't realize that we were still in, in the ground. So mm-hmm. we came to the point where we had to get out. Well, down in, in the South Valley, the fences that they have up, they have the spikes and all that because it's, it's in an area where, you know, it's not good. <laughs> I was able to get my daughters to crawl underneath, but me as big as I am, I couldn't fit <laughs> underneath. So I said, the only way I'm going to get through here is if I climb over the fence. And so I said, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so while I was on top, something came over me where I, 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 like fear came upon me and and I I lost, I lost it. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up letting go and I had a steel rod iron go through my, I have the scars here. Wow. It went through my hand and exit up through the top. Wow. And so I'm hanging on this fence with my feet dangling about two feet off the ground. And I'm, I, I look at this and I'm like, oh my gosh, it just went right through my hand. And so I had to make a decision right away. And so it went right and it, the long story short, it ripped the artery. I ended oh. up pulling it out. Everything came out of my hand. But the powerful thing was my daughters were with me. Mm-hmm. But my daughters, it was like, they looked at me like, okay, let's get you home, you know. I pushed everything back in my hand, held it, and I said, I'm going to live and I'm not going to die. Yeah. I'm going to live. And I'm, I started speaking and declaring what I knew. I'm going to speak life. Yes. This is not going to take me. And my daughters, they, were, they had their little bikes. Mm-hmm. And my daughter, Justice, would just ring her bell because I was like losing it. I was losing a lot sure. of blood. It sure. was just shooting out. Oh, my. And I was like, 
So I would just listen to the bell, mm -hmm. and it, it, our house was right down the street, so they mm -hmm. got me home. My wife was able to take me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, the doctors said, I don't know how you're alive, mm -hmm. how it got plugged. You should have bled to death. And, wow. um, but um, here I am. They said I wasn't supposed to have no movements. The, the uh, x-rays show that the uh, main artery is like a rubber band that you stretch and it was cut. Wow. There was that much of a gap in between in the x-ray. How it got back together, they don't know, but we know. Yes. Because my wife and everybody was in agreement. We speak life. And I bet that. everybody was just praying everybody, for you, right? <laughs> everybody. My wife was, was declaring and coming against and said, no, there's something came in and wants to take your life. And we came against it, the, the uh, spirit of death. And, and uh, yeah, next thing you know, uh, wow. the next report is, is, is uh, of course, a lot happened in between. Sure, sure. And, but um, they were trying to figure out how it came back together. Wow. And so I should have bled to death. Yeah, that is, that is a miracle. That's powerful. But that's and, our God. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and so going into Africa, or, or I was going to say, like, why, why do you think that these powerful miracles happen more in some ministries, in some countries, more than others? Like, you know, we see some incredible things like in yeah. Africa, India, yes. you know, arms, uh, you know, just, just being, uh, appearing from nowhere yes. and, you know, and raising the right. dead. And yeah. so, uh, and even, you know, here in some ministries, you see, you know, the, the, the signs and wonders in some places, but not not everywhere. So yeah. what's, what's going on? This is just my, my experience and what I've seen by us being in Africa. In Africa, they don't have no Walgreens. They don't, don't have no CVS. We get a headache, so we go down the street. Right. We're, here in the Western world, we're so spoiled with, with medications and all that. We don't turn straight to God. Yeah, that's not our first That's thought. not our first. It's, yeah. it's yeah. Walgreens. It's right. CVS. Right. In Africa, they don't have none of that. Right. They turn to God directly. God, you're going to have to do this. Because there is no other resources. Right. There is no other way. And so over there, the hunger for, for the miraculous is so, it's pure. Yeah. It, I've seen the purity and, and the hunger for it that they believe it. Right. Even if they don't know this God, they believe that he can do this. It, yeah. And, it, it, and because, because of their belief and understanding, it, it's so much easier. Right, right. Than here, because here is like, well, oh, that's good, but right. you know, we're we're spoiled with a, with a lot of stuff. And, and you're right, and they believe it because they're already like, let's say, kind of spiritual people in in their in their own way. Maybe yes. they believe in negative spirits, but they're open to that spiritual realm already. Yes. So now, when they hear the truth, you know, yeah. the, the 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 God of gods, yes. you know, then they're they're uh, more receptive to these signs and wonders and yeah. and so you know that's just so wonderful so but you know i still i sense that we're seeing more more and more of that in our own country yes, and you know you 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 know we're seeing more signs and wonders but you know we know too um i think this is an important question that um signs and wonders do not always transform a person yeah. Unfortunately, we see a lot of people always going to, you know, waiting for the next prophet to come, yeah. waiting for the next, to see these signs and wonders, but their lives aren't re don't really yeah. change. There's They're no power there. Yeah. The same people you see month after month, year after year in the same prayer lines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and it's not a judgment because I, you know, I really want the whole body to, to, um, to understand their identity, what you, what right. you teach. So what would you say to them? Well, you know, and this is just in our, our ministry, how we do, the, we do this, because you do. You see these people that come over and over. The, the, you have a conference. They come every single day to the altar. Right. They're in repentance. They have their hands up. They're, 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 they're going through the same thing every single right. day. But one of the revelations that the Lord showed me is that they don't understand their identity. Right. They keep coming up here from a slave mentality. A slave mentality. They come up, they put their hands up, I surrender. That's what, that, that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there comes a time that, that when you come to the altar, he says that he's king of king and lord of lords. Who are these other kings? The right. Bible says that we're supposed to be kings and priests. Right. So right. one of the revelations that the Lord had showed us was that as they come to the altar, let them know that they're coming up to, 
up to see the king of kings. Right. And that part of their identity is kingship too, mm -hmm. That's not right. just a slave. That's so right. when they come up, they're, they're, they're coming up to a king that will look at another king and say, right. what can I do to you? Yes. Study, study kings in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The kings only meet for two reasons. One, right. when a king is jealous of another king and wants to take his territory, or he wants to exchange the gift. Mm -hmm. You see, he wants to do and help the other king. So one of the revelations that he showed us was that, that they come to the altar understanding, especially those that have been coming over and over. Right. Come up as a king. What kind of conversation would you have with the king? What would you request? Right. And what answer would King Jesus give to another king? Right, right. And that's Changes a, the mentality. I yes, and that's, that's the word right there. Changes the mentality. Only because, you know, um, in Hebrew, the word for repentance is teshuva. Mm -hmm. and, and it's more than just, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm here. Yeah. It means to transform your mind to transform, to return back to Eden, which we're all trying to yes. get back, yes. back to that, uh, that place where he, or we could dwell with him, you know, all, right. all the time. So I think that's such an important, that sometimes they don't, uh, people don't understand what certain words mean. So, yeah. um, so what you're saying, it's more than just saying sorry, you know, yeah. and, and not changing, yeah. but it's to really, you know, I like that, that scripture, um, uh, is it Romans 12, 12, 2, that says, um, uh, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know what is the good and acceptable will for your life. Right. So I, you know, sometimes if people don't understand that, maybe it's they need a little bit more transformation, don't you think? Yes, uh, they do. But a lot of people don't even understand what they're supposed to be renewing their mind to, yes. the Bible says. Yeah. We have a responsibility. He right. says, renewing is your responsibility. You right. renew it, right. but have the mind of Christ. So you renew it to have the mind of Christ. Right. right. So how does he think? How does he respond? Do I keep coming to the altar like this, or do I come to the altar? What's next for me, Lord? Right. How can I have an impact while I'm here? How can I change things? Right. How can I be transformed to help transformation right. in the land that I live in, have right. an impact? And, you know, you, you just reminded me of, like, how you come into or to the throne. He says to come boldly into the throne of grace. Yes. And it always reminds me, and I know, I know everybody gives us this example, but with our, our children, I mean, they don't care if we're talking to, you know, the president of the United States. If they want your attention, they're going to they're gonna be tug on you until, you know, you yes. And that's the way, you know, yes. our daddy in heaven, he wants us to have that boldness to know who we are in yes. heaven, right? Yes, not, not only the boldness to know who we are, but the, the boldness to understand the authority that we carry. Yes. It, it's like, so if part of my identity is, 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 is being a king because he was crucified king of the Jews. I have some kingship in me. Right. So when a king walks into a place, if, if, if the president was to walk in right now, right? right, unannounced, we didn't even know he was coming. Right. His presence changes the atmosphere. Sure. The atmosphere doesn't sure. change him. Sure. He Absolutely. changes it with him without saying a word. That's right. Why as Christians aren't we having that type of impact? That's right. Because yes. we don't understand that we carry that. Yes. But, but you know, we, I, I like that because when we walk into a room, we should... People should take notice because who do we carry? We carry the king of kings. That's right. But if we don't know that, then who else is going to know that, right? Cause, exactly. Because like we were saying in the other show, it's like you can't give what you don't know you have, yeah. right? But once you know you have it, it's it's contagious. Yes, it's just it like the love of Christ. You know, when you really love his pure love, people can sense that. You know, they know that 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 that's that's that that agape love and yeah. and I think that that's really what he wants all of us to know. So the message of the hour, we've heard we've heard unity, we've heard prayer, we've heard revival. What do you think the message of the hour is right now? Purpose and identity. Purpose. Understanding your purpose, mm -hmm. your identity so we can bring true impact to not only our our where we with our family but our states, our government, our nation. So we can truly transform. Right. Like he said, go disciple the nations. We have a responsibility to do that. It's a command by him. Amen. Amen. That's good. I think we might have a couple of minutes left. I'm not sure. So in one minute, can you look into our camera and just sure. give our, our audience an encouraging word in yes. about a minute or so? You no, know, the, the awesome thing about, about our Heavenly Father giving his son Jesus 
to redeem us and re restore us was to redeem us to the original intent of who we're supposed to be here on earth. And that is, is not only moving in miracles, signs, and wonders, but knowing our purpose and our identity. To be able to bring true transformation, not to only individuals, but to territories. Taking dominion, taking back what's been taken from us, and also come with an alignment and unity with other ministries to be able to help develop, to bring transformation to where they're at. And, and we... we we need to realize that, that God just didn't give His Son just to redeem us, just so we can wait to go to heaven. He redeemed us and restored us to bring the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. So I, 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 I just want to pray that, that this revelation it gets embedded deep inside of you and that you're able to take it. And if, if it get, get plugged into a place that teaches the full gospel of the kingdom, the, the fullness of it. And as you learn, take it and apply it in your life. That's good. That's good. And see, and that, those are the message of Jesus, right? Repentance and the kingdom. And the kingdom. I mean, of course, the first step is to have intimacy with the Father by repenting yeah. and asking Jesus into your life. And once that's done, that's amazing. Then the door is open for all this amazing revelation, yeah. all these wonderful things that he has in store for us, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And so uh, one thing, another thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is uh, revival. I mean, we hear about, you know, revival um, and we're praying for revival. We're pray praying for the second Pentecost. Yeah. Uh, and so I feel a little encouraged by that because I do see the little fires of, of, of uh, revival. Uh, just what, what do you see uh, about revival right now? Well, as we travel in different places, depending where we're at, the, what the Lord has showed me that, that the revival is going to look different than the past revivals. It's going to be the transformation and the renewing of the minds of the people and moving in their purpose. And as they move in their purpose, that's just not for individuals. We're talking government. We're talking people in places of authority. He has showed me that when they get this and they understand the purpose of, of, of the now, that he, I'm a now God. Mm -hmm. I'm not a God. Yes, we hope for things to come, but I'm a now God. Well, I'm in the season that we need to get things done now. And so... As, like as we that. travel, we're seeing that. We're seeing a remnant of people uh, saying that, you know what, I'm going to okay. do things now. Now. I like that. Our God is a God of now, isn't he? Yes. It? Thank you so you much. Could you believe so our time? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, our viewing audience, for joining us today. If you'd like more information about my program, please contact me at mariagoldstein7 at gmail.com. Check out my website, www.voicesinthewildernesstv. In 877-991-4800 is my phone number. Until next time, I wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. God loves you, and so do we. Thank you. Call for salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. For salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. Reverend Dr. Maria Goldstein's newly released Eight Keys to the Kingdom, Learn How They Work, is a definitive work on understanding the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Many of God's people have settled for the mundane. They have not taken their place as the heirs to the partakers of God's divine nature.